you have just won big on the lottery or maybe just decided to invest a serious amount of money into one of the world's best hi-fi systems and if you was in a position to be able to do that why would you not want to do so but the problem lies in that what type of system do you choose when money is nearly no object you can have anything that you want and there is lots and lots of options great options to choose from so how would you go about shopping for a hi-fi system of this caliber well maybe you would travel to the stunning city of Porto in Portugal to attend the ultimate sessions extreme hi-fi show which is a hi-fi show being held at the Sheraton hotel that you can see there behind me and what I think is different about this show compared to the Munich high-end show as an example would be the scale here there are only five systems in five rooms so where at Munich you are always feel like you're chasing around trying to see as much as possible with this show the ultimate sessions you can relax you can take your time you can really sit and listen to the systems to get a really good demo which is what I'll be doing as much as possible over the next couple of days now I do need to warn you, the average price of the hi-fi systems that are being demonstrated over this weekend is in the hundreds of thousands of euros. So extreme is very much, you know, part of the name. Now in this video, my plan is to tell you a little bit about the five individual systems, the components that have been carefully curated for the systems by the show's organizer, Ultima Audio. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you, you know, which of the systems I would buy and why. And I hope you're going to enjoy the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I am in room number one with system number one. And the speakers of that system, I think you can see there behind me, they are the Avantgarde Acoustic Trio G3 horn speakers. And these are really something else as speakers to see in the flesh and listen to in the flesh. And actually, if I move out of the way slightly, you can see there, one set of avant-garde acoustic space horns which are a twin folded horn base subwoofer type design really and there are more space horns at the back of this room that are not being used because one was enough output for the size of this room and i've actually been uh, met with avant-garde acoustic at their factory out in germany and made a video actually about what makes horn speakers or really these horn speakers that little bit extra special and if you're new to horn speakers i would definitely suggest you go and watch that video which I'll link up there for you. So I'm relatively familiar with the speakers, but definitely not familiar listening to them with the system, both analog and digital, and the amplification that's being used here. It really is a very, very, very special hi-fi system.
I am in room number two, of course, with system number two, another exciting, hugely aspirational hi-fi system. And the speakers that you can see there behind me are the Chroma Atelier Mercedes speakers, which are a brand new speaker. In fact, this is their world premiere. And Chroma Atelier was not a manufacturer that I was aware of before attending this show, but they are a Spanish speaker manufacturer with a very developed portfolio. They're definitely a brand worth checking out. And I think their speakers are really interesting, but none more so than the Mercedes that you can see there behind me, because they feature a Mungdorf AMT for the tweeter, two six and a half and two eight and a half inch purify aluminium mid and base drivers. They have a crossover with components from Mungdorf again and also from Juland. And the cabinet is made from a material called Creon, which is like a stone material, man-made stone type material, obviously for anti-resonant properties. And each speaker weighs 138 kilograms. And interestingly is the hi-fi system that's driving them, especially amplification. You have the Griffin Commander preamplifier and also the Griffin Apex monoblock amplifiers and this is actually my first chance to listen to the apex amplifier especially the monoblocks and they really are something they really are huge amplifiers that weigh over 200 kilograms each and can produce over 200 watts of pure class a in power into eight ohms but more impressive is their current capacity which is over a farad so over a million microfarad per channel these are serious amplifiers and again this is a a massively aspirational hi-fi system that costs well north of half a million euros. So a very, very serious system. And some other inter interesting components in this system, if I move again out of the way, you've got an MSB DAC, full DAC setup, and the Tyco Extreme music server. And today I want to try and spend a bit more time listening to this system. But the thing that impressed me about this system yesterday was its muscular capability, the, the authority and, the, and the, the strength of the music, the impact of the music was really something. And then there was some of that big, bold, rich Griffin sound, which I always really enjoy. But there was also delicacy and smoothness with it as well. So a nice combination of the two. And I think how this system differs compared to the avant-garde acoustic trio G3 system with the, the tube amplifier is, is that obviously that's a larger room and there's maybe just a, a little bit more air and spaciousness and grace to that sound, which is very impressive. Whereas this system here, with a more line array type of speaker, it sounds a bit more direct, a bit more focused, and there is more kind of muscle and authority to its sound. Both systems are extremely impressive. Obviously, which one might float your boat would depend on what, maybe what types of music you listen to, and of course, what your preferences are. I would quite happily go home from this show with either. I'm in room number three with system number three, and this is an all Burmester system. And it could also be classed as the most simple hi-fi system here if pure box count was all <laughs> we used to decide that metric. Because if I step out of the way, you can see this is just a five box system, which is relatively simple by compare to some of the others here. But each individual box has a, a story of its own. I think the first interesting story would be the speakers, the BC-150, because they are just aesthetically striking and I think particularly stunning. There's just something about the way they look. You instantly, they just stand out. They instantly are unique. And the bits that I really like are the aluminium work on the sides. It's just lovely, really, really lovely the way that's been done. And this particular pair has leather on the top and the bottom. And there was a chap from Burmester in here yesterday giving a presentation and he mentioned that it's possible for customers to have any finish they want for that top and bottom section and that that section is interchangeable via magnets. So you could have leather one day, 
rose wood the next day and maybe rose gold the day after. So that's a really you know, interesting feature with these speakers. But I think probably more interesting about this system, again, if I step out of the way, are the two Burmester 159 monoblocks. Huge monoblocks, really, in, in terms of physical size and in terms of power. They can deliver over a kilowatt of continuous power, and I think something like 3,000 watts of burst power. It might even be more than that. These are serious, you know, serious amplifiers. I think weigh something like 190 kilograms each. So, you know, a, a very physical size. And again, in the presentation the chat from Burmester gave yesterday, he mentioned that Burmester made some real breakthroughs with these amplifiers, technical breakthroughs with them. So again, this is a, you know, a very aspirational, very high value, extremely high performance hi-fi system. But how does it sound compared to the avant-garde acoustic with the Wadax and the Condo system? And how does it compare to the Chroma Atelier Mercedes speakers with the Griffin and MSB and Tyco Extreme? Well, interestingly, I think this particular system sounded a bit more modern in its presentation. That's a really interesting word to use, but it's quite lively, quite upfront, re relatively forward in terms of its presentation. I wouldn't say too much so, but definitely more uh, in a more modern type of fashion. And I think it, this system would suit more modern music really very well. In fact, some of the music that was being played here yesterday was still hi-fi demo music, but more modern in its style with more kicking bass and more kind of punchy type of sound. And this system was fantastic for that. And it also has a nice airiness to it, a nice spaciousness to it, which is, you can hear the room in here. Obviously, it's not a perfect acoustic, but the, the music that was played in here with intended spaciousness sounded extremely spacious. So that was a really impressive part of this system. I think the visuals of this system would, would be the winner for some audio files because, again, you know, it's, it's totally striking. You can't miss it. And the sound would be you know, articulate and precise and very organized. And I think that would be the bit that sonically would stand out to the audio file. I'm in room number four with system number four. And I think many audiophiles watching this video will think that this is the most real world hi-fi system here. And by real world, I just mean it's physical footprint. I think this would be a, a system that you could have in a more realistic sized room by comparison to the big avant-garde acoustic horn system, which of course you need a really large room for. But I wouldn't say that takes anything away from the system's performance because behind me we have some very striking standout to a lot of audio file speakers, the Audio Vector Aret R8. And the system that's being used to drive them, it's mostly Accuphase, Accuphase DAC, Accuphase Monoblock Class A power amplifiers. But there's also a very interesting brand new in your statement music server. And there's also some Isotec mains conditioning very interesting is the Brinkman Oasis turntable with a DS Audio optical cartridge. And yesterday I had the luxury of listening to a copper vinyl lacquer being played, a, a, the actual record. Yeah, it just looks like a piece of copper actually with, that's been turned into a record. It's sounding really, really striking yesterday. And I think that is how I would describe this particular system sound. It has a lovely organic, relaxed, easygoing aspect to its delivery. Yes, it maybe it doesn't sound as authoritative and as powerful as the Big Griffin and a Chroma Atelier system, and it doesn't sound as large in scale as the big avant-garde acoustic trio speakers, but there's something maybe a little bit more intimate about this system. You can easily just sit there and relax and just go away with the music if that makes sense. It just puts you in a very calm, tranquil place. And that means you can listen to music all day, I think, on a hi-fi system like that.
I'm in room number five with system number five. And some audio files will definitely feel I've saved the best until last because for some audio files, there will be no other speaker other than a panel speaker. And I fully understand it. Look at the visuals, totally different. And the Sonics are different as well. And this particular pair of panel speakers, the Diptyque reference are very unique in that they are an ISO dynamic type of speaker. And I think ISO dynamic speakers have been around for a long time but these particular pair have certain patenting technologies which make them perform the way they do. And the performance, the sound of these, the bit that stood out to me is you have that lovely open gracefulness of a panel speaker, but with a bit more bite, a bit more crispness, and a bit more immediacy, a bit more resolution to their sound. And that's a nice balance when you compare that and combine that, sorry, with the, the very open gracefulness. There's no softness there. We still keep that bite and that immediacy, which I really enjoyed. And then when you move out of the way and look at the hi-fi system that's been driving them and, and sending them a signal, obviously there is the Burmester amplifier. But the bit that I really like about this system is that VAC statement preamplifier. The preamplifier top section with the power supply section beneath it. And I really like it because it's just beautiful. It's a lovely, beautifully crafted piece of hi-fi. And you can look inside the top through a clear top plate and see the internals. I just love that there's something really special about that. To the right hand side of the system you have the brand new Antipodes Oladra music server. It's my first time seeing that in the flesh and listening to it and you have the Aqua Formula CD player and I think it's the XHD DAC from Aqua which is a resistor ladder type of DAC but with their own proprietary architecture and technology in there which obviously gives it a distinct unique sound and I think overall this hi-fi system is definitely offering something very very different to the other four systems that are here. And I think the real characteristic, the real strength of this system is its openness. It has this wonderful openness, which means the imaging from the system is particularly impressive. And I would say this system sounds as open and as spacious as the big horn system, the big avant-garde horn system that's in the other room, but one, you know, a, a, you know, a tenth of the overall footprint. But of course, you know, this type of panel speaker that's maybe only an inch or so thick, it doesn't give you the same authoritative base that you get from the, you know, the big Chromer Atelier and Griffin system or the big Burmester system. But the base from these has been really impressive, not necessarily for the output in terms of subwoofer base, but for that mid base uh, region, which is important for vocals and important for instruments and guitars and stuff like that. That's what these speakers have been delivering. Really impressive, I think, for a panel speaker type of design. Again, for their footprint, they are really tall, but <laughs> they're actually only an inch or so thick. So I think this is a really interesting system that's offering something totally, totally sonically different. I found myself a semi-quiet corner outside of the Sheraton Hotel just to give you my thoughts and feelings of this hi-fi show in general. And I want to start by saying a huge thank you to everybody from the Ultima Audio team. Firstly, for inviting me out here, but secondly, for making me feel so welcome and, and so relaxed and, you know, kind of part of the team in, in a sense. And that's been really nice. I really appreciate it. So a huge thank you to Miguel and to all of the team. And I think really that's probably how everybody's felt who attended this show. Yesterday, obviously Saturday afternoon, there was lots of people here and there was lots of people here still after nine o'clock at night. So so I think that shows everybody felt relaxed, everybody felt like they was having a really good time. And again, I think that's what's different about this type of hi-fi show. The smaller scale type of show means you do feel more relaxed, you do have more time to sit and listen to the systems here, rather than with the larger hi-fi shows, you always feel like you might be missing out on something special if you don't move on to another room. But cutting to the chase really for me, there's one system that stood out to me and I actually sat and listened to the system for about two and a half hours non-stop 
I was chatting to, to a guy at the same time, but I literally sat and listened. And I listened through all types of music that I would never normally listen to personally. But I enjoyed every single note. I appreciated every single note. I, I was struggling to find you know, any of the sonic characteristics I didn't really like about the system. It was just sounding big, effortlessly big with a lovely immediacy everything was just sharp and immediate and crisp but there was no crispness to the sound at all it was everything was presented with a a softer roundedness to it so it was a wonderful combination of crispness of sound i.e resolution detail especially in the high frequencies the higher frequency resolution was really outstanding some of the best i think i've heard so far as an audio file but with this lovely rounded character and the rounded character was most notable with vocals and by a rounded character, I mean they just have like this three-dimensional sense, a nice rounded character. So the system is the big avant-garde acoustic Trio G3 with the WADAX reference music server and the WADAX reference DAC and the Technics turntable on Gecko uh, tube amplifier with the M7 preamplifier. That is a very, very high-priced hi-fi system, but wow. It is a fantastic combination. I, I think because it has the the fantastic sense of the immediacy, the clarity, the dynamism that you get from the ultra efficient horn speakers. But with that that tube amplifier, I think just rounds that sound off in a really, really sweet, really sweet kind of way that makes it very seductive as a system to listen to. So on that note, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of show coverage, really telling you a little bit about the five different systems and the components that were on display here. I have really enjoyed my time. Obviously, it's my first time at attending a show like this of this kind. And I think maybe this is potentially a way forward for the future you know small regional type of shows where people can come and, and see a whole bunch of stuff over the course of a weekend and so it'd be nice to see more of these in the future and of course if you'd like to see more of those types of shows or all sorts of show coverage make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see this type of coverage for the munich high end show which will be in may of this year and there's a few other things going on as well thank you very much for watching i'll see you all soon